Thank you for having me. So yeah, so I work in the quantum chemistry team uh, at Quantinium over in Cambridge. Um, and the, I've, I've worked on, I'll be speaking about Hamiltonian simulation uh, using techniques with cubitization and actually running the circuits on uh, Perlmutter with, with the Q-tensor net uh, simulator. So I, I'll just briefly talk. So my contribution to this work is from the quantum algorithm side. Um, and my colleague Yakov, um, he's been working more on the HPC software development. So we can actually run the, run the, the simulator. And obviously, the, none of this will be possible without the, the QTensor Net team. So I want to say thank you for the incredible work um, to allow me to do this research. Okay, so Hamiltonian simulation by cubization, it's, it's very um, enticing because it's, it's known to have optimal um, complexity in terms of Hamiltonian simulation when you compare it to Trotter and kind of truncated Taylor series methods. And furthermore, it's kind of, it's opened up a new pathway for algorithms research generally. So you might have heard of this grand unification of quantum algorithms method. This is all based upon this cubitization framework. The problem with these methods is that they're often um, expressed in kind of oracular frameworks where kind of there's large numbers of ancillas and kind of you have these complex slash unknown circuits. So, what, what we do, well, I mean, formerly at Cambridge Quantum, we work quite a lot with circuits and kind of logical circuit compilers, logical qubit compilers. So I, th I thought it'd be very nice to kind of test and build the primitives for these fault tolerant circuits. Um, and obviously using QTensorNet and Perlmutter is, a, is the perfect kind of test bed for that because it allows us to simulate large numbers of qubits. So I'll briefly try and uh, introduce quantum signal processing in, in three, three or four slides. So uh, if you start with a single, a single qubit example, so we have the, the signal rotation, and this is an R, just a simple Rx, for example. Um, and you can see if we're going to measure just this, this, this D here is kind of the, is the measurement on the zero. If we just measure the zero of this, this unitary U, which is the Rx, we kind of you'll see we get this kind of cosine squared, and if, if you were to plot this as an, as an angle of theta, you would see this nice sinusoid squared. So the, the idea around quantum signal processing, which kind of comes with NMR pulse composite pulse theory, which is how Isaac Chang's uh, had this incredible insight from his previous work there. Essentially, by interleaving these RZ, these RZ, and keep keeping the original signal um, rotation Rx. And interleaving it with an with an with an arbitrary um, set of RZ rotations in, in such a way that you end up with this kind of two by two matrix product. It, it, it essentially allows you to implement any Chebyshev polynomial um, of cosine theta, essentially, and that the Chebyshev polynomial acting on kind of on the zero element of this of the of this um, matrix product is just P, P A and it, the, 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 the essentially for any set of these, it, it's shown that any essentially any any Chebyshev polynomial, which can then approximate most polynomials, most functions on a matrix, can be expressed with these phi's. Um, so it's, it's very very powerful. And the, 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 the famous theorem from quantum processing of quantum processing is expressed here and. I think the main point to take away here is that in the initial kind of canonical implementation of quantum signal processing, you, we can only implement um, functions which have definite parity, so essentially odd and even functions. Um, okay, but it's been shown. That you might say, how can how can all of the how can we know how to implement the phi's? Well, there's algorithms which have been worked on by the groups of Lin Lin and, and also Isaac Chang's group as well, which can find, as long as you have a function input, we can find any set of, of phi's to implement that function. Okay, so we, we've worked on a single qubit. So if, if we're now gonna generalize this to kind of a matrix, um, kind of the, the, the grand unification case, and to implement any polynomial transform on a on a matrix, you kind of you kind of have this similar structure, but instead now you have this kind of this interleaved RZ with this with this LCU block here, and then we repeat it d times in the same way. So, wait, so you might see that 
the, the structure is kind of looks quite complicated, but I'll try and break it down to kind of simplify it. So we have the RZs, which are these signal processing files, which we know from the previous theorem can implement any any function, uh, any, any any function with respect to the um, kind of the, the the theorem. But now to, to generalize this to a matrix function, what we do is we use a, this technique called LCU. And LCU is essentially a way of, it's called block encoding a matrix. And essentially what we do is we, we take a mat the matrix we want to signal process. And what we do is we, we put it into the top left-hand corner of, of our ULCE matrix here. And th this is typically the, the zero, zero basis of the operator. Okay. And then you can see what we, what we do is we, we, we select around the, this operator here on, on the zero, zero basis here. And then this is essentially picking out this H in the LCU and it's putting it up onto the signal processing qubit. Um, and by picking as by post-selecting it, we're kind of picking out, by post-selecting on the zero of this register, we're picking out this H. And then we can see by, by doing that, we can then get this green matrix here, which, which can then be, which can then be, this is the signal matrix now, like before with the single qubit case. But we then now have this, then we can now signal process it with the, the phi's in the same way. And this works in exactly the same way as the single qubit case, but now we're, signal, now we're doing any polynomial transform on, on a matrix, on, on the matrix and block encoded into the, to the circuit. So the motivation of this project is to try and use this framework to do Hamiltonian simulation, where the, the polynomial transform would be e to the iht. But remember, because yeah, because the that there there is a slight problem because we have to have definite parity with this with with uh, with the canonical implementation. And I, I believe there has been work in this area to improve this, but because we have to have definite parity, we we essentially have to. Uh, use the Euler equation to break apart the time evolution unitary and um, and essentially do, do the cosine and the sine separately, but then we can recombine them using this, this simple one qubit L, uh, linear combination of unitaries primitive. Um, okay. And if we were going, then obviously what once we've once if, if it, once we've got the, this kind of the signal processed cosine function of the matrix. Um, and the sine function of the matrix, we we will then get a new set of phi's for every single time, so for this 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 ht, and then we can then measure the the operator that we're simulating over time. So this could be average magnetization or some dipole moment if you're a chemist, for example. Okay. Now the the obvious thing here is that the the LCU this block encoding here, which gets the gets the matrix into onto the, the signal processing qubit here. So we have this S, this S register. The, uh, th this is, this is clearly the really expensive kind of mysterious step. So the aim, I guess the first step in implementing this kind of doing the full quad signal processing implementation is to kind of, is to, con to, to try and build and compile the circuits for LCU. And then furthermore, to kind of test the contractions, like actually simulating them on Perlmutter. And then once we've done that, we can apply the D blocks in, this, in the same way um, as, as this, this uh, kind of framework, and then we can do the signal processing. So we're trying to do LCU for, 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 the, for the rest of the talk, can be focused on LCU contractions, uh, uh, implementing the LCU circuits and then contracting them on Perlmutter. So one of the main recipes for linear for building, doing the block encoding um, is this linear combination of unitaries framework, um, which is which is done which is LCU stands for linear combination of unitaries. So we typically it's, it's made of this prepare, a select oracle, and then an unprepare uh, oracle, and then we post select on zero. Um, And it kind of, it kind of it, by doing this, it allows us to implement these non-hermitian and non-unitary matrix 
matrices onto onto a state's register. So I'll, I'll walk you through a kind of simple example. So say we have some Hamiltonian or some emission operator which can be expressed in so so it's a non so, so, so some in this example we'll, we'll keep things emission. But say, so say we have some kind of uh, some an operator that can be expressed as a weighted sum of Pauli's. The norm is kind of is the we we can take we can normalize the obviously the the operator. The norm the norm of the operator is given by this um, equation here. And then obviously what, what we do is we we wait we have this register called the prepare register and we wait the for each weighted Pauli string we wait the end individual individual bit string with a prepare register uh, with it with a state preparation algorithm to put the the normalized weights of the the operator onto an individual bit string okay so, so for each term in the linear combination of unit trees we then uh, we then have an, an a unique bit string and this is essentially is an arbitrary state preparation algorithm and obviously it, if you have non if you have complex if you have negative weightings like a lot, a lot of chemistry hamiltonians for example um obviously then these square roots are going to be complex so this can be this can be problematic so co complex state preparation is quite difficult but as, as we'll say later we can absorb the imaginary coefficients in, into the select part of the algorithm so typically the prepare is done with kind of these uh, kind of these in series well so i mean the, the most basic way of doing the preparation is kind of doing state preparation in series with with a rotation for every single um so, so these alphas are encoding the, the the coefficients here these alpha rotations are encoding the coefficients here so you typically do one for every single weighting in your hamiltonian so every, every single turn your every single term in your hamiltonian and then you have this select register where you essentially, for each term in the Hamiltonian, for each weighted term in the Hamiltonian, you then selectively apply a Pauli operator, and with, with these quite quite intense multi-controlled gates here. So this is why it's very fault tolerant. So you can see now we we've got our prepare register going in, which we prepared before, but now we can selectively apply our Pauli strings to the the weights that we encoded to the unique bit strings. So you can kind of see here we're building up this linear combination of unit trees right now. Um, so do, do, there's multiple ways to do this select register. Kind of the most naive way would just be to do a uh, kind of a, what we call I call serial Pauli compilation, where you just do a, a lots of multi control. You just, you just control every single Pauli inside this Pauli box. Th this can be done quite simply with PyTicket because we have this kind of we can to control any circuit box that we give it with multi-controls. But the problem is obviously you have lots of in-series multi-controls. So this motivated us to kind of think about some other ways of doing things. And then this, so there's this work by uh, by Peter Love's group where you, you kind of use the parity gadget um, structure. So obviously for, for those not familiar with parity gadgets, you have, it's, a, it's essentially a, it allows a um, it allows us to implement any Pauli string we want by having a bit a basis change and then the RZs in the middle and then a basis change on the outside. And because you have this similarity transform structure, it allows us to kind of only control on the U in the center here. So, so we can form this kind of quite complicated. We can we can take this quite complicated multi-control thing and recompile it to kind of have a single multi-control onto the Z here. So and then using kind of the Pauli multiplication rules, we can on, on the parity qubit we can take we if we if we if we had to have a complex coefficient in our LCU, we can use the Pauli multiplications to encode the complex um the the, the complex element. With, with with the Pauli multiplication rather than the state preparation side. Typically, what would, that you then do is you then unprepare the um, the LCU, which projects everything back onto the zero state. Yeah, so you can now see everything's back onto the zero as we rotated it back. And 
and then we measure the zero and then that projects everything back onto the onto the wave function so then we end up with a linear combination of unit trees here okay so now we so we have some benchmarks for, for this kind of these these uh complicated fault tolerance um things that you can kind of see for, for the hubbard model we kind of for, for a 20 qubit Hubbard system, we kind of work at about 50,000 gates. Um, and we have these two different uh, kind of compilation strategies. You can see one has, um, I mean, they're, they're quite similar, really. But then you can see, obviously, when we're doing high, like uh, chemistry problems with hydrogen, for example, we have, like, because your Hamiltonian has a lot more terms turned on in, in the T body interactions, you end up with many, many more. Uh, prepare registers needed, prepare qubits needed, which requires much larger circuit there. So this, this is, there's lots of room for improvement here. Okay, so I've spoken about kind of the circuit compilation stuff, but how do we actually run these on the Perlmutter? So the, these are the kind of, these are the circuit structures that we're dealing with. So we, we have a one register with zeros and we have a state register. And then we would do an LCU and we measure on the zero register. So obviously, but this post selection step is not not kind of a trivial step with um it's not what this is an unusual thing to do with tensor networks because most of the time you just work typically with expectation values but it's quite easy you can just essentially um you just essentially project onto the zero vectors here and then just build your typical uh, um tensor network um operator sandwich but with a post selection onto the zero registers um so, we, so we've implemented this in PyTicket. It converts a circuit and implements it as a, uh, a tensor network with post selection in the, under this kind of framework. And then we have a few benchmarks here. So essentially, I'm ju just sticking with the Hubbard model with the kind of power gadget compilation strategy. Uh, you can kind of see we have. So this this is quite promising. I mean, I guess. You can kind of see the the calculation time is increasing kind of exponentially, but the memory increases linearly. But even so, we're st we're still able to 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 contract a twenty two uh, qubit system a Hubbard model with twenty two qubits using twenty nine qubits for the LCU in three thousand seconds, which is quite nice for a fault tolerant primitive. And considering it only uses two two point five megabytes, that's quite nice. So you can kind of see this. This is I'm almost finished now. So you can kind of see here that the this is memory for for the LCU, and then you have this kind of uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, site Hubbard models. And you can see here it's kind of, it, for, with LCU. You kind of once you get enough Hamiltonian terms, you have to add an extra qubit into the prepare register. So that's what the stepwise model is here. So. As long as you're in a, the same qubits kind of regime in your prepare register, you, you get linear scaling with your memory, uh, which seems to be quite nice. And then obviously the contraction time is kind of is is uh, kind of you can see we've got log ten here on the scale, so it's kind of you can see that it's um, exponential with contraction time. Uh, but this is kind of not using any of the this is just all the default um, methods within Q, Q tensor. So I will just finish. So. What we've done is built a PyTicket intense network converter with post selection, we've implemented LCU contractions on Perlmutter. We still have to apply the LCU D times and do the quantum signal processing. We need to look further at compilation strategies that might le leverage more ancillas, which might be more suitable for intense network contraction. And then finally, I, there's a question to the, the NVIDIA guys, does the repeating structure of quantum signal processing allow for a simple contraction path? Okay, thank you.